Good evening. I'm back with my Tandy 102. Same one that I did the power supply repair on. And I'm going to take it upon me to uh, repair the uh, vintage CCR82 computer cassette recorder that uh, I picked up for this. I picked it up on eBay for relatively cheap. It was like $15 or something for parts. And it doesn't work. Opening it up uh, in the past, it, the belts have all deteriorated, so we're going to switch over the belts today, and hopefully I'll bring it back together. It's kind of crusty. I need to do a good cleaning on it. You can see the buttons have got some crud in them, and there's some dirt in here and dirt in there, and marks and scuffs and dirt, but I'm not going to show how to clean these things because there's a lot of good videos up on YouTube that... Uh, have shown a very, very, very detailed method of uh, cleaning your vintage electronics, going as far as RetroBright and stuff like that. You can take uh, take a look at like the 8-Bit Guy or uh, LGR. They've done some pretty good videos at cleaning this stuff up. Anyway, I bought these belts from eBay. This is like $8 for a kit. There's a hundred and so odd in there. It's random, it said 120 plus. And it gave a list of sizes that would be included. I was hoping that they would be packaged you know, individually, maybe labeled. Because uh, I don't know what size belt uh, is going to fit all around the capstan and uh, all that in here. So it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. And I was hoping that if something was labeled in here, I might be able to give you guys a little bit of a you know, idea of what you should put in here. But I mean, for eight dollars for you know a hundred some odd belts, random sizes, pretty good deal. Considering that a kit for a particular tape deck, just for two or three belts, you could pay twenty five bucks for a kit catered specifically to that unit. So for what's in there, that's great because I've also got my daughter's tape deck I want to repair. And a couple other portable tape decks. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'll have to pull those all apart and figure out. Because I'm sure the uh, belt for the uh, counter is gone too. And there seems to be some relatively small ones in there. So hopefully there'll be one in there that'll fit that as well. Different diameters, thicknesses. It's a fairly well-rounded kit. But, you know, nothing separated. It's just kind of all haphazardly thrown in there. But what do you expect for 8 bucks? So we'll go ahead and we'll take this thing apart and see if we can find a belt that'll fit. These rubber feet have also kind of deteriorated. They're like hard plastic now. I, I don't know if there was like a piece of rubber that was in there at one point or what, but those are in poor shape and I'll probably figure out a way to replace those at some point too. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll take this thing apart. So we got a screw here. Now, there's not much that can go wrong with these things, like it's it's a tape deck, you know, aside from some capacitors and stuff like that that might need replacing, like, it's going to mostly just be the belts. So, there's the main drive belt, and that's the one that's driving the flywheel for the capstan off the motor, and like, look at that. Like, that's just, that's pathetic. So it's completely lost its tension and elasticity. There's another belt here. So this is a clutch mechanism and there's another belt underneath here and you can see that one's completely, uh, if this thing wants to get the right light balance, but it's not even remotely trying to spin that belt at all. So I'll have to pull up the PCB here so we can get underneath. Okay, so Got a little screwdriver. We'll take this off here. And the shield is really screwing up with my uh, exposure. It's reflecting the light. There we go. And once I got rid of that, now we got a decent exposure on this thing. Some crusty old masking tape like crap. Just holding some wires around. Not seeing too many other screws. There's one here.
Okay. The board feels loose, but this crusty old little piece of wire here that they've used to tie these wires onto the board. There's, oh, there's another screw hidden underneath the wires here. So now this board should pull up and away relatively easy. Except I've got get rid of that. That's just I mean I I get it that it's right next to that flywheel, but come on, you could have come up with a little bit of a better design radio shack. So I might be able to now pick this up and flip over the whole assembly. But I'm gonna need two hands to do that because I got this is attached with the power, so I'm gonna just cut the video and we'll come back. Okay, so no, you can't flip it over. So we're just gonna have to work around this underneath. I might just grab something and see if I can just wedge something up here to just hold the board up. So all you need is a paper clip. Just fold it out, bend a little hook around the end, and you can use the paper clip to just hook onto the belts. I didn't have a piece of wood or anything, but I did have this little shim. So that ought to do. And so let's get in here. Yeah, and that's pretty soft too. So let's get rid of this. This one's for the counter. Let's get that out of here. Seems to track the pulleys. The tension's all right. It's not super tight, not loose. That one should do. And I'm gonna take this one off now. Oh yeah, this one's saggy too. Yeah, these things are just Oh, yeah. Eh, maybe we'll give one of these a try and see how it goes. I'm going to get this thing back underneath this flywheel. Okay. It's on there spinning everything. I mean, this is a clutch, so, like, theoretically, it's going to take up tension on the belt. I mean, we can give it a shot and see how that goes. So I'm going to say that that's probably going to be about the best that I've got in my kit here. So we'll go ahead and start putting this thing back together. We had a screw here. Okay, so that should keep those wires off the flywheel. And now we just need to find the main drive belt that'll run between the flywheel here. Try this one. Give it a couple good spins, get you in the idler couple good spins to get the belt squared up. 
That seems relatively decent. I mean, we've got rotation on everything now. So that's a good sign. And that's where you belong there. Okay, so with that said, slap the case back together and I'll put a couple screws in there and we'll give it a test go. I want to mix that up with the good belts. Well, it's back together and just before we power it up, I'm just going to give the tape path a clean here. So we'll clean the heads, isopropyl, nothing fancy. Pinch roller, and try and clean the cap stand up a bit. The unit's got batteries in it. Transport movement on play, on Q rewind, Q fast forward, rewind. If we're using the remote, I can hit play, nothing happens, which is what it's supposed to do. This button is very, you can tell it's been used a lot. It doesn't click very much anymore. And yeah, so we're going to throw tape in there. And I got a brand new type one. But. Remote out, transport movement. The counter is also running. Get the Tandy out and we gotta go rid of this garbage. Remote, which is your tiny pin, and then you got play and record. And I can't remember which one play and which one record is. Ooh manual is backwards controls and connections a tape output to ear jack okay so the black is the output it's what i thought it was but i wasn't 100 percent sure so we just got to plug the output jack into the earphone remote is the tiny one and that'll control queuing of the uh, machine by the computer. And the tape goes into the auxiliary, not the microphone input, the auxiliary input, because it's set at line levels. So you could realistically use any machine as a data tape drive for one of these computers, any compact cassette deck, it doesn't really matter. If it's got the remote input, that's huge because when you turn your remote trigger on, that means you can actually control activating the cassette player by the computer. It's got a built-in relay that triggers the remote. So it'll only run the uh, transport when you give it a C save or a C load command. Um, some decks only have uh, a microphone input. And then you got to dick around with your levels. So I've got the uh, Tandy connected to the tape deck. And I'm ready to start saving some programs and seeing if I can reload them off the tape. See how well it works. Um, the volume level I've set low because I want to mess around with this monitor command. Because the monitor command should actually allow me to monitor the sound of the data stream coming out of the computer while I'm saving data, the computer's got a little built-in tinny speaker that automatically plays whatever it's reading off the tape. And up until now, I've been using this deck, which is uh, it's a great deck, it's CTR-117, and it's not designed for computer data, it's, it's a cassette tape recorder. 
but it works great and the nice thing about it is it's got this peak level meter on here the nice thing about that is it helps you set your levels when you're recording or uh, or playing back audio into the machine um, obviously you can see why is that I don't really want to use this is this nearly the size of the bloody damn computer and runs on C cells so it weighs quite a bit though it is a nice deck and this is one of the decks that I've got to change belts on which is another reason why I bought this massive kit but I do like this as a personal recording deck uh, good for recording phone calls and that kind of stuff it's it's a decently built deck you know it's got Vox and everything too but it's uh yeah it's just huge compared to this nice little guy here which is perfect for being portable with uh, a portable computer so uh, this one's going to be retired from data use and it's going to be used for personal recording and other things like that one thing that you're gonna want to do if you're using standard audio tapes not data tapes because they're they got a leader on them and as soon as you start a C save or a C load, not so much a load, but saving, for instance, for your first program, you're going to want to make sure that you get rid of that leader because as soon as it activates the remote, it's going to start recording to the program. So you're just going to want to twist past the leader so that you got some ferret tape there so you don't miss any data. So you want to set the remote to in and we can put it in record just by pushing one button which is the nice thing about these uh, data cassettes you want to push both buttons at once just the one button and now it's sitting here idle the counter is going to be a huge thing when you're saving to cassette because when you're loading you can give the computer a command to C load the name of the program and your program, especially if you're going to use long tapes like this, like most computer cassette tapes are like a 15 minute tape, not a 60 minute, it might be 10 minute tapes. So there's are going to be a lot less tape on there than not nearly as long, but this is a 60 minute tape. So that's a, that's a lot of time, that's 30 minutes per side. So if you want to see load a program that's at the end of the tape or in the middle of the tape, and you don't know exactly where it is, uh, you're going to sit there for a long time before the computer even starts reading the header of that data because what it's going to do is when you load the program from basic it's going to listen to the header when it writes data to the tape it dumps a header that tells you tells the computer what the file is called and everything and it listens for that header so as it's listening to all the data unless it hears that header first it considers it all just noise and garbage and it just ignores it until it hears that header and then it'll start loading the uh, the program and the computer just went into power off mode so the counter is a big thing so if you're going to be storing a lot of programs on a long tape even a shorter tape if it's a bunch of smaller programs you might want to write down what your uh, counter position is make sure you keep track of the counter so if you're putting in a tape that's rewound and you want to add to it at the end you're going to reset your counter make sure you fast forward to a blank portion of the tape and you're going to note that portion down on uh, the index card so you can put your name of the, your program on there and write down the the uh, the counter time that way you can fast forward to just before where the counter is and when you do your C load you're not going to have to sit for three minutes before it even finds a header so we, we're sitting here record remote off so we're gonna go into basic and I'm gonna just I'm gonna see save disk utility basic and that's a that'll be in my next video uh, what that program actually is C save D S K U T L dot D A There we go.
so theoretically just save that program so let's go back to menu uh, let's save teeny basic so load teeny dot basic c save teeny dot basic that's the header much longer program. Okay, so theoretically, we've saved these things to the cassette. So let's kill these programs. And it's okay, I've uh, downloaded these through Trash Talk onto my PC, so it doesn't matter. So let's kill teeny dot basic and kill SKUTL dot basic. So they should be gone from memory. Good. Tape is rewound. We'll hit play. It's queued on remote. And we are going to go C load. DSKUTL dot basic. Tricky thing about these things, you gotta tweak the volume on the tape in order to get it to actually read properly. Okay. listing the program <clears throat> so we just read loaded this from tape looks okay so let's save it so we should have it in memory let's run it yeah, it seems to have ran, seems to have loaded. Okay, so let's try and load C loaf. Looks like it loaded okay. Let's list it. I mean, it looks okay. All the line numbers are there data is just jumble of stuff this builds a, a uh, basically it's a compiler for a uh, machine language program which we'll get to in another video but yeah for it looks like uh, looks like the decks working so yeah you get a tweak with the volume levels in order to get the thing to read the data back properly but other than that I I think we've uh, I think we've successfully repaired this thing. Now I got a tape drive. All right, all right. Well, I think that's where I'm going to end this now. And yeah, the, hopefully that's some use for somebody. Maybe just some entertainment, whatever. All right.
going to go have another cup of tea and go to bed. All right, have a good evening. Thanks for watching. Bye.